okay. <laughs> what, a, what a great start. Alrighty. Hello, everybody, uh, to this D&D Improv uh, crash test video that we are currently doing right now. Because, you know, we, do, we usually do sketch comedy, but sketch comedy is now starting to be the home, or shorts and the short form stuff is starting to be the home for sketch comedy. Not our choice. Literally every platform out there is making shorts the home for sketch comedy videos. So we're trying to find different ways to do traditional videos. And so what we're going to be trying to do today, instead of doing sketch comedy, we're doing a little bit of improv comedy. So we have four different categories that we're going to go through. Uh, one of them is uh, epic campaign recap. Then we got like D&D tier lists. We got a D&D, uh, uh, I can't remember the third one, but it's another like play where I have to act out stuff. And then Jaken sitting at the computer is going to tell me when to freeze. He's going to roll dice. And then I have to go off of the story with what he said. Anyway, and then at the end, we're going to be doing some D&D Reddit stories. And this is going to be heavily, a lot of this information is going to be heavily relied on your guys' feedback. If you guys enjoyed this stuff, if you want to see more of this, if you guys have any thoughts on what we should do. So make sure you guys leave uh, constructive criticism into the comments as we do these. We'll definitely probably run through these a couple times so to make these as good as we possibly can. But as of right now, we're just going to jump into the first game, which is Epic D&D Recap. Jake has a couple suggestions ready for me to go and... At this point, everyone, if you want us to recap a funny moment in your D&D campaign or just a moment in any time you want us to do, put it in the comments and we will get to them as soon as we possibly can. But we are going to go through two of these so you guys have time to write. And then when Jacob says we're ready for more, we'll start grabbing some from the comments. But Jacob, what's my first prompt? <laughs> Your first prompt is... My character was in a bar fight with two dwarves, and one had him pinned on the floor. Oh. He did the only thing he could and bit the man's beard. Yeah, cool. That's an easy one right off the bat. Thanks, buddy. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. This is so stupid. Normally, I'm hoping that we could get more people to be a part of this. That's why we kind of did this talent casting call. But for now, it's just going to be me. All right? So deal with it. So I enter a tavern? Or yes. a bar? You, you're in a bar fight with two dwarves. Okay. Oi! You too! You gotta stop drinking all the beer! We need all the beer! No! You can't do this! Oh! What do you think you're doing? Oh, we're dwarves fighting ground on a jump. Ah! <laughs> Wham! Oh, take, take that. Woo. <laughs> how, how was that? Oh, gosh. How was that? <laughs> Good. Great. Jacob, thanks for such an easy one right off the bat. I got you, pal. <laughs> What's the second one? Your second one is... I was playing a centaur buddy, and my buddy was a dwarf. We meet the BBEG, which was a dragon, during the first game. The centaur bucked the dwarf off of his back at the BBEG and got a nat 20. Okay, okay, I got an idea. Here we go. Yeah, this, these are so easy to do. Grateful for Jacob for help, having him pick it out. Let's change the scene to the gold mine. Treasure room. There we go. Yes! Okay, here we go. Grr, grr. Who dares enter my chasm of treasure? Oops. Oh, hold on, my mic, did I click it off? 
Do you guys still hear me? Okay, we're still good. Sorry, I clicked the button. Let me try that again. <laughs> Ugh. Who dares enter my chasm? Us, bitch! <laughs> Go, dwarf! What the poof? End scene. <laughs> How was that? Jacob, what are the comments saying? Uh, basically, we need to get a better autofocus. <laughs> True. Do you want to just have it... Uh, do you want to just manually uh, lock it right here? Sure. <laughs> it's locked. Locked? Uh, yeah, we have a lot of comments about Blurry Dragon. Damn it. <laughs> um, a lot of where do you enter the prompt? What? A lot of people are asking, where do you enter the prompt? In the comment section. In the live chat, guys. In the live chat. Uh, I don't know why, but seeing you getting all blurry is so funny. Oh, good. They just leave it blurry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so that, that's kind of the premise of this one. So we're going we're gonna to run through a couple of your guys' suggestions. Whenever Jacob feels like there's one I can do the best that I can because you know Jake gave me the two easiest ones out there so once he gets those then I'll do probably like two and then we're gonna get feedback from you guys I already see one I could throw you okay you, you go for it you ready for this super easy one oh, screw you <laughs> oh guys pause the chat there we go we tried to capture a moose as a pet and accidentally broke its leg and then got attacked by a bunch of star spawn we killed the star spawn, healed the moose, and made it speak. It is now our pet. Okay. <laughs> um. Let's see. What what do I got here? What do I have here? I need to find my. Um. Wait. I'll be right back. All right. Come here, cat. This no, is I'm the kidding. <laughs> Jake and currently narrating uh duke ran into the house to presumably go get something uh, okay for this skit i love you i'm doing improv oh, he's coming back <laughs> everyone sure heard like that right <laughs> probably okay cool so a moose it broke its legs they get attacked by something and then this thing's its friend now yeah basically okay Moo! Come here, you moose! Moo! Come here! <laughs> Mold Earth! Oh! Oh! Moo! Oh, crap! We broke its legs! Oh, no! Oh, there's things flying everywhere! Fireball! Foosh! What do you have to say about this? I'm a moose! I'm... <laughs> Man, this is so easy. So easy. What's another one? <laughs> um, Something I forgot to mention is this is a crap run of everything. This this stuff might not be good. Hey. But hey, you didn't have to pay for this. So there you go. <laughs> Your next prompt is a group of mimics that is a pile of gold coins in a dragon horde. Done. <laughs> Behold the mimics. Let's see. Um, here's one. A high elf cleric convinces the tiefling rogue to set a cursed woods on fire, and little did they know that the wood explodes when set on fire, and the tiefling nearly died and had to pay the cleric to heal. Dang! I knew I should have added a fireball effect to our arsenal. Uh, change us to the forest seed. So high elf, high elf cleric. Got it. Mr. Tiefling, I need you behind me here is a forest. 
I need you to burn this forest down because lumberjacks are coming to chop down these trees and we can't let that happen. Why? Because it is cursed. So we need to destroy these forests before the lumberjacks come and get cursed by this forest. Can you do that for me? <laughs> this is great. This is so easy. Ha! Absolutely! Fireball! Foosh! Poof! <laughs> we did... Okay, so one of the things we already need to add is effects. Because the fireball would have been a lot better if we actually had it. <laughs> Alright, but anyway, that's the premise. I think I just lost... Nope, it's still there. That's kind of the premise. Um... What are your guys' thoughts? I know, again, it's just me. If there were multiple people here, it would be a lot better. But again, crapshoot. We're just throwing spaghetti off the wall and seeing what sticks. What are your thoughts? Tell me. Also, we want to thank Gavin for the 10 gifted subs. Oh, thank you, Gavin, for, for the 10 gifted subs. Appreciate that. I'm just saying subs, not memberships. Or memberships. Dang it, Jacob. I know. That's my bad. How dare you? Uh, let's see. What do people think? Um, more, 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 more. We need more. Spaghetti tastes good. <laughs> Love the energy. Okay, that's good. Hungry for more D and D content. Fair. Yes, these are funny. Its awkwardness makes it even more funny. Ah, great. <laughs> uh, great idea. Keep it going. Booga booga more and more. <laughs> Major potential. Love this. Keep going. Okay. Basically what I'm seeing. And then there's like a lot of prompts being sent. Yeah, more people would make it work. Or being done not live for Duke to play all parts. Okay. With a True. few effects and extra people, this would be peak comedy. Oh, peak. That's peak comedy. Okay. Honestly, I would love to see you do something like the uh, like the narrated D&D &D videos, but actually acting them out with a group. Oh, that's an idea. Oh, that's an idea. Okay, spaghetti out the wall idea. We have a narrator, and the narrator picks out a story, and us as performers have to act everything out as the narrator is going on. That that's a that's a new one. Instead of just doing props, we actually go through the narration. Make Jenkin do something. Um, Lion Box, thank you for the dollar. Oh, thank you for the one dollar. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Um, I like it. Yes, more people would be so funny. Okay, so the consensus is you guys enjoy this. We just need more people and maybe some added sound effects. Yes. Yes. All right. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys like that one. Let's do one more for craps and giggles, because why not? Um, let's see. All right. Uh, let's do this easy one right here. Oh, thank you. My dwarven ranger was convinced that she, that he should run through a bunch of traps, and as my dwarf, Dwargel ran into a 50-foot hit and lost most of his health. Okay, take it to the cave. Splat! <laughs> Game over. <laughs> How was that one? A lot of ha-has. What? Uh, Lion Box, thank you for the $10 super chat. Hey, thank you. And they say, prompt, we bought a bucket with an infinite pocket dimension inside. I used the bucket as my new home, and then the bucket got stolen by some goblins with me still inside of it. 
Okay. I got an idea. Let's see if this is going to work. Hilariously bad. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Good hops, bro. What, what was it, a pocket bag or bucket? We bought a bucket with an infinite pocket dimension inside of it. Okay. Go to the town. Hey, guys, look. I found this bucket that has an infinite... I could just fit my whole self in there. Watch. You guys ready for this? Ugh. Wonderful. Just there we go. I got to just get myself in here. Perfect. All right, there we go. Perfect. Wonderful. In in the bucket. There there we go. All right, going over to my home. <laughs> now a goblin. I can't play a goblin because they're all green. <laughs> and we're in front of a green screen. Behold, the bucket. Oh, wow, that's a really cool bucket. I wonder what's in there. Ah! He's showering. It's what? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Oh, but it's a scene. Done. All right. <laughs> this is so stupid. <sighs> anyway, should we move on? I believe so. Okay. <laughs> but consensus was... Yes, people enjoyed that. Just more people and probably added sound effects. Uh, Wonderful. Uh, yes. All right, next one we are doing is our D&D Top 10 list. This is where I make a Top 10 list of anything around Dungeons & Dragons, and I present it to you guys. This is a way for all of you to interact with the board that we have and to have you guys share us your thoughts and tell me if you agree or disagree with my board. Right now, Jake is trying to get one of our director, producer people on. And once he gets that all set up, we'll turn on the tier list. All right, I have John. You got John? I got John. Okay, perfect. All right. So, next one. D&D &D tier list. Jake, if you would like to present the board, all you have to do is click the icon where it says window screen and turn it on. The eye icon. Yep. Bam. There we go. Boom. Tier bracket list. So, today, we are going over... This is me, Duke, presenting to you guys with our D&D &D class tier list. I am going to present which classes go to what tiers here. And we are going to start off with the Barbarian. The Barbarian, A tier. Rage is incredible. Gives you a lot of great buffs. You are a tank and everyone loves and relies on you. And the new UA uh, playtest stuff lets you use Rage in a lot of social uh, situations now. So bam, A tier right there. Yep, there we go. Wonderful. Next, the Bard. Now, this might come to a shock of a shock to a lot of you. Which letter does the Bard start with? That's right, the letter B. B tier. The Bard is supposed to be an expert in the arts, but there's me to blame and also Vox Machina to blame that Bards are now just sex icons, which they're not. They're meant to keep stories alive and to keep going. So, bam, B tier because of the memes. All right? So, Cleric. Also, B tier. I've played clerics, and never have I been excited, yet not excited to play a cleric. It's just kind of been meh the whole time. Plus, almost every other spellcaster in this list can heal. So, like, B tier. Smack. Right there. Next, the druid. What does the druid's letter start with? That's right, a D. D tier for the druid. I feel like everyone who plays a druid gets really excited about playing a druid, but then they get frustrated because they don't understand the druid at any point. 
I see more people being frustrated at the mechanics of a druid than actually having fun at the druid. So like D tier. Perfect. Right there. That's that's the that's the happy place. Fighter! What is the fighter's first letter? That's right, F. So it goes to B tier. <laughs> the base fighter gets pretty boring as you level up. Probably the first 10 levels are exciting because you get more bonks and that's what you need. But after that, it just gets really boring. Subclasses do really well, but some of the subclasses just add flair to your bonking or just give you even more damage to your bonking. Eldritch Knight is pretty good because it lets you get spells. But other than that, you get more base features than actual subclass features. So bam, B tier. Next, we have the Monk. Put that, put it right at C tier. The monk is really good at early levels, especially with stunning strike, but then after that just kind of doesn't do very well. The fighter, the fighter does better than the monk at early levels. If you guys don't know, there's a feature that the fighter could get where he could use unarmed attacks, which deal a D8 earlier and faster than the monk. What? You have to slow down. I gotta slow down. Thank you. So bam, monk, C tier. Also, the four element subclasses, it's not that great. It's not that great of a subclass. It, it's really boring. But anyway, Jaken, how is our audience reacting to this wonderful tier list that I have already made? Um, well, you had you had some reactions with cleric and druid. Uh, let's see. Druid is better than S. Good. It's delightful. It's great. Spicy tier list. Uh, you could upset people. A lot of... Where's the artificer? Uh, his car broke down. He couldn't make it. Um, we have a lot of comments about your ranking. It's a good ranking, isn't it? Perfect. Great. Awesome. We're not going to take any feedback from my ranking because it's the best. So we're going to keep moving on. Paladin. Paladin is S tier. Paladin is a fantastic, powerful martial fighter and also half caster. Also, they throw it back. That is all. Next, Ranger. A tier. I know that may come as a surprise to many of you, but to be honest, the Ranger, in my opinion, is everything people want the fighter to be. You cannot change my mind on that. Everyone wants the fighter to be better. Just play a ranger. They do just as much as damage if they really want to. Plus, they have spells. It's freaking great. Next, the rogue. Jacob, moving along with me. Ready? One, two, three. You... S tier. Yes. The rogue is at S tier. Why? Because it is incredibly versatile. And can avoid damage. They can just avoid it. Breath weapon? Nope. Gonna dodge out of the way. Fireball? Nah. It misses. Even though it was centered on me. Just, meh. Just, it could go away. You know, it's fine. Oh, I got stabbed to death? Nah. I'm just gonna take half stabbing. It's fine. So, rogues. It's fantastic. Subclasses? Fantastic. Also, they have advantage. Next. Sorcerer. D tier. They're just wannabe wizards who got their powers from their rich dad. Also, wild magic is all also wild magic is only fun when it doesn't affect the whole party. Next, warlock. Let's move it up to S tier. Let's get people's hopes up and then move it down to D tier. Because warlocks are overhyped. That is all. And now the wizard. B tier. They're the best magic casters in D&D &D and, and can learn almost every spell. And that is why it gets a B. It doesn't make any sense how they can learn every spell, but they can't learn any healing spells. So that's one of the reasons why they got moved down a block. B tier for the wizard. And also, as well... They have to spend a fortune just to learn new spells and get spell scrolls. So that's why is B tier. All right. That is my tier list of the best classes who I think is it 
yep, this is it. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Did, did I bet 100% of everyone agrees that this is the best tier list they have ever seen. Yes? Correct? A $10 super chat. From See, look at that. People um, are paying me money because they want this. It's from Umbi the Derg, and they say Beastmaster is S plus class. Also, the Ranger didn't get a S tier mainly because Wizards of the Coast still just don't care about them, even in the new UA. That, I just wanted to point that out. The, the fast chat. <laughs> Um, it, it's so fast because everyone loves it, right? So we have we have a lot of people commenting on the actual list itself. Oh, real? Oh, it's great. This is a top ten tier list of classes, right? I'm, I see that shaking head. You may be going like this, but this is a yes. Hey, cantrip cast. The entire sketch is going to cause an entire DM therapy skit due <laughs> to the rage. You know for a fact that will happen. Ten dollars super chat from Gavin. Beastmaster is F. There's no F. Why? Because F couldn't make it. F's in chat. I uh, got some tomato emojis. Oh my! Let's see, can we do a poll for the popular opinion? <laughs> a lot of F's being said now. <laughs> F's in the chat. Oh my god. Alright, so we're under a consensus that this is the best tier list that everyone has ever seen in terms of the best D&D subclass. Wonderful. Perfect. I think that was a 10 out of 10 trial run. Yes, Jaken, do you do you agree? I, I would say this one was a success. Wonderful. Awesome. Alright. Cool, guys. Thank you for your opinions. <sighs> And also, thank you to everyone who has been donating super chats. This it really does help us a lot. It really a lot of our a lot of our revenue has been coming from uh, crowdfunding recently, and so you guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much for your love and support. John would like to know if the artificer did make it today, where would the artificer be placed? Um. Next question. Fair. <laughs> all right everyone the next one we're doing is a little bit of more of a storytelling so this one is called um uh jake you remember what this one was called uh, i think if you downsize the discord on your right side I'll, I'll have it or end that third one very bottom D, &D theatrics we are going to be doing one called D, D theatrics where we are going to be getting a prompt from you guys and I'm going to act out this prompt as best as I can. When this is happening, Jaken is going to tell me freeze at certain points. And I will have to uh, freeze. He's going to roll a d20. And whatever the outcome is, he's going to be a dungeon master and also NPCs. And we're going to kind of go back and forth a little bit. So we do have someone here to help out. So I can bounce off of it, which is really good. Uh, also, Jaken... When we're switching th scenes and things like that, you will just have to make your best guess on where to choose which scene I'm going to go into. Mm. Fair? Fair. Okie dokie. So, chat, give us a prompt that you would like to see me act out. Let's see. Got. Really hot in here. <laughs> Uh, we have the wizard throws a fireball in a jungle to kill a bear. That's the one we're going with? That's the one we can go with. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. In a jungle. We'll go with the forest. Oh, I guess I'll have to do a jungle one now. And then we have the next one lined up. Thank okay, you, John. Okay, perfect. All right, setting the scene. The wizard is entering the forest, getting ready to find this bear. All right. Now, if I followed the directions correctly, the town people said the bear likes to live around these parts of the woods. So if I'm careful enough, I'll be able to spot possibly the tracks on where it goes and where to find them. 
So let's see. Where would a bear like to go? Okay, there's some tracks over here. Let's see if these are the right tracks of a bear. We're going to freeze. We roll. And our roll total is a seven. <laughs> you take your time looking at these tracks. And you decipher... These have got to be the bear tracks, and they are going up a tree. These... <laughs> all right, these are definitely bear tracks. Now, if I know, all right, if I know bears, they like to keep things territorial. So that means it... That's it. <laughs> the bear is up this tree, and now I must climb this tree. To find said bear, how will I climb the tree? Well, I'll show you. Athletics, here we go. <laughs> we'll freeze and we'll roll. Okay. And we got a four. Oh, you great. Face plant into the tree. And that's it. <laughs> here I go. <laughs> All right, I have determined that trees uh, can be very, very difficult to climb up. And they're also very hard. So the next thing, all right, how, how do I get up this tree without climbing the tree? That's the, that's the next thing. Oh, I got it. Uh, I'm just going to mold earth and then see if I can move the tree down. Here we go, ready? Oh, 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 it made it very small. Oh, wow. I don't know what kind of mold earth I did. Like, okay, cool. Um, the, the bear wasn't there. Okay. All right. So I think if I'm correct, bears love the sound of animals. Animals in, 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 uh, pain. Because that lets them know that's an easy target, an easy dinner for them. So here we go. Going to reenact an animal in pain. Mm. Ouch, help me. I'm in pain. <laughs> Freeze. <laughs> you roll a nat one. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> and this squirrel walks up to you and just kind of cocks its head at you. A what? A squirrel. I'm going to kick the squirrel and try to injure it. <laughs> okay. You kick it. And it just goes flying. Oh! Dang it! I forgot. I'm a plus three strength as a wizard. Dang it! Um, how do I... How do I... Oh! There's the bear! Okay. So, what I know is I have to stealthily creep up to the bear, and then I can take it out with no problem. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Get ready of this firebolt. Pwah! You launched it. The bear catches on fire, and he is successfully slain. <laughs> Just... Oh, wow! That was a quick death. Oh, thank goodness. Did it... Just caught on fire. Just... That's all it did? Yep. Oh, thank you, God. All right, cool. Okay. And that is the scene. <laughs> Yay, nay! What are you people thinking? <laughs> we got the cue from John to start wrapping it up. Okay. $10 super chat from Gavin. Pause. Another bear shows up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. We got a lot of yays. Uh, one nay. Bear. Let's see. Bravo, yes, yay. Bum, bum. Bro, you didn't die of 1d4 damage. I mean, when I hit the tree, I probably did. <laughs> a lot of yays, a few not bads. The nay is from the bear.
Yeah, this would definitely be a lot better when there's multiple people helping. That is for sure. That is why I sent out the talent, uh, the talent finder, remember? So if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and you want to help be a part of things like this, <laughs> please reach out to us. We, we want to help. We, we, I, I need the help, please. I know it'll do a lot better with help. One person says, nice, but maybe we can stop as a chat. That'd be good. I just don't know how that would work without constantly getting stopped. $5 super chat from George Anderson. They say, I really like D&D, &D, but know this. I tune in to watch your infectious charm and laughter. If you're happy and enjoying it, then I'm enjoying it. Oh, well, that's good. Let's see. Yay, but have a start prompt. Jay can say when to freeze and roll, but the chat says what happens next. Oh, that's a good one. We could try that. We have a few more prompts that John picked out for us. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's try that. Let's do a freeze with Jaken, and every time we freeze and roll, we'll get prompts from the audience. That could take a little bit of time because there is a delay. But we will do as best as we can, just to see how it goes. Let's try it. All right, let's try it. John, give us the next prompt. John's next prompt is, Barbarian goes to a PTA meeting. PTA? Yeah. That's a... Uh... Explain it to me real quick. I'm thinking AA. It's not an AA meeting. Oh, wait. No, why was I also thinking AA? PTA. Parent Teacher Association. I think that is what it stands for. National Parent Teacher Association. Oh, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. A barbarian going for a parent teacher conference. Got it. Interesting, okay. Basically a conference. Uh let's do let's do one where I'm not having to roleplay many characters at once. How about we do that? Cause I feel like that one's gonna be a very much I have to roleplay a lot of people. Alright. Um Tiefling lights himself on fire to prove a point. <laughs> okay. Man, we just really need just the the fireball effect on here, don't we? Tiefling lights himself on fire to prove a point. Got it. Alright. Jacob, give me a random scene. Uh, Where should we start this scene? You're in a tavern. Oh, gosh. All right, Tiefling lights himself on fire. He enters the tavern. <sighs> now I know what you might be thinking. How could someone this gorgeous walk into a tavern and just act like a normal person? No, 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 no. See, I am a glamour Tiefling. I sparkle when there's no light. I am a bright and wonderful person. That's what all bright, wonderful people say. I have a great personality as well. And each one of you here, each one of you, deserves to buy me a drink. And with that, if no one does... I will cast fireball in here to prove a point. So do I have any takers? Anyone going to buy me a drink? Huh? Anyone? We're going to freeze. And chat, this is where you enter your suggestion while I roll. Rolled a natural one. You got to put that you got to put those dice away, man. <laughs> you gave me the dice. He starts singing a beautiful song. Dang it. 
All right. No one's going to buy me a drink? Well then, I guess I'm just going to have to persuade you with my sweet-sounding voice. Listen here, all... <laughs> I can't sing. I'm not a singer. The wheels on the bus go round and round. <laughs> round and round. Round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round. Freeze. We are rolling. We're putting this dice away. That was another nat one. We're going to use Gavin's $5 super chat. One of them throws a drink at you. The wheels on the bus go round. Oh, frick me! Ah, I think he just broke my nose. Oh, next time, give me a heads up. All right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank. I mean, I. Yeah, that's free drink. Okay. Um. Cool. Does and because oh gosh, everyone here also has the opportunity to heal this to get close to my face please do i have any takers anyone this is really hurts hello oh shit i forgot it's closed damn it <laughs> and scene we tried <laughs> Thoughts? Yay, nay? Oh, yeah. Where, people are asking, where's the fire? Oh, poof. I know. We got. We just got to get the fire, like, effects in. Umbi de Derg. Super chat, $5. Oh, thank you. Prompt idea. BBEG minion doing the OSHA inspection on a dungeon. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. Let's see. Um, we have a lot of yes, yes. The fire was the friends we made along the way. Yes, yes. Let's see, try to relax. Yeah, I am very nervous right now. I do. I've only dabbled. I'll be honest with you guys. This is taking a lot for me to do this because I've usually used to writing scripts and following the scripts i've dabbled in improv and so it's definitely kind of shaky and also i'm having to perform it by myself i don't have anyone to bounce it off of and so it was just kind of like all right let's let's try this out a lot of people wanted the tiefling to light himself on fire um it works well it's fine it's fun to watch more pauses Fair. It's chaotic. It's just the way we like it. You need the power of chaotic discord for improv. Cool. All right. So we're under an understand. Again, people enjoy it. I think it's going to help a lot if we have more people. Perfect. All right, guys, we are going to move on to our last one where we're going to be doing D&D &D Reddit stories. We have to do a couple of transitions here with the camera because I'm going to be sitting back at my desk. Jacob needs to move over to his desk, and then we're going to have John jump in as well. We're going to go over to some Reddit stories, and we are going to... Th these stories, they're not going to be for the sake of just telling a good story. I'm also hoping that these stories will be able to help people... We'll, we'll be able to provide some good advice with things because a lot of these horror stories revolve around a lot of the same things and I feel like our version of it and the discussion the discussing of it will be able to be a huge help to a lot of these people. So really quick, we're going to start the five-minute timer really fast so we can get set, set up. So if you guys need to go take a break or something, we'll be back in five minutes and then we'll tell you guys some Reddit stories.
Hello! Okay, I think we're here. John, give us a mic check. Uh, no, you are not. <laughs> let me uh, let me get you up here. There we go. Now give me a mic check. Uh, beep, boop, boop, bop. All right. How we perfect. doing? All right. I think you were a little cool. loud, but I think you're fine now. I can turn down. I'll turn down my game. No, I, I got you. I got you. I can. I can turn you yeah. down on my end. Okay, give me one second, guys. Gotta do something here. Okay, how do I make my how do I make my virtual camera thing so you guys can see me? Uh, that's fine. We'll all just be on this. All right. So anyway, guys, we are now jumping over to D and D Reddit stories. These are kind of like the D and D horror stories that you'd find. So again, this is mainly for discussion. Hopefully, we'll be able to provide some like very good criticism feedback with this. So with that being said, I'm going to head over to our discussion. You guys could see this. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh, look at that tier list. By the way, just, just look at that tier list right there. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Let me get the first stories up, and then we will get started. And again, chat, please feel free to talk about these in the comments. Uh, please be uh, aware of other people and their feelings as well. Again, we're all friends here. We just all want to have a good time. So really fast, I'm going to paste this first story in here. Jake and John, are you two ready to go over this story? All ears. Go for it, man. Ready? Yes. Yes. Oh, gosh. We hear the back echo on John's side with Jake. And... All righty. Here we go. This one is called Overly Controlling Player Managed to Make Me Hate GMing as a Whole and Fear Running the Campaign in General. Edit, replace single letter names with some with something longer. All right, so it starts off with, so I'm fairly new to running tabletop games, and I choose a system I had been interested in for a while called Lancer. Me and my roommate, who I'll refer to as Balor, both knew, both knew a fair bit about the system. So we got a few friends together to play. I chose to run one of the pre-written campaigns, though it didn't come with any maps. I had planned to draw them on my own, but Balor insisted too, as he wanted to, as he was a game design major. The start of the campaign went over pretty well with a basic combat tutorial and the characters introducing themselves. Skip to one or two sessions later and problems start to crop up. Another player, Iskander, was very new to this game and needed her hand held a bit when it came to learning the system. That's fine. This is all... This is all of our first times actually playing, so I expected to give everyone a hand. However, Balor was very eager to help out I Iskander at every opportunity, even talking over me when I tried to explain. He didn't act like this for anyone else, though, only when Iskander had a question. By maybe session five or so, I had definitely gotten into the swing of things. I was less shy about the role playing, spun the story to give the players a bit of a chance to show off, and started 3D printing terrain pieces to give the map a bit more life. However, I still had a few slip ups and Balor was very quick to correct me on them, but only after I had realized and explained to the group, butting in with a quick, yeah, I knew that and I meant to bring it up. By this point, I was also drawing my own maps, and Balor often had some suggestions, quote-unquote suggestions, like how there had to be these four pieces of dangerous terrain here, and also getting mad at me for using dice to represent my enemies since I don't print out any tokens. I think the last draw for me was shitting on the terrain pieces I tried to make, telling me that, I, that green wasn't a good color for outdoor terrain and that I should have done gray instead. After that, I had more or less or I had more or less lost my enthusiasm for that campaign and basically made up a reason why this next week's campaign had to be canceled. After a while, I decided to just put the whole thing on hiatus, saying I wasn't up to it. And almost immediately, Balor tries to jump in, saying he could have run the campaign instead, even though pretty much everyone agreed it would suck to have him leading the whole thing. After all that, he still tried to start a new campaign. 
though pretty much nobody wanted to play. And if I do try again, I definitely don't want him in it. Woo! <laughs> so there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, the we have the we have the OP, the original poster, who started to make this campaign, and he had his roommate start butting in. At the same time, this roommate seemed to be a little fixated on um well, what was her name? Iskander? And helping that one individual person out as much as they can. And seems also a little bit of a rules lawyer. And also kind of want, wanted to run the campaign themselves. So anyway, what... Jake and John, what are your guys' thoughts? What what was going through your head while reading this? Uh, well, I, I thought this is clearly somebody who doesn't know how to talk to people. And communicate their feelings effectively. The uh the the OP? No 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 the uh the 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 Balor, the person they were dealing with. Okay. Like a lot of D D horror stories issues I feel break down to one guy who feels a certain way and is doing just the worst job of communicating that and get putting that on the rest of the group. Right. Uh, uh so yeah, uh that's raw thoughts. We can get more into the detail, but Jaken, how about you? Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much pretty the much same, same communication, communication uh, uh, definitely, definitely one-sided, one and, uh, uh, I probably would have paused, 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 paused you, you, you're, you're not muted, not sorry. muted. There you go, try it again. What? There you go, perfect. Go ahead. Yes, I agree. <laughs> That's it? I, I concur, I, I don't... I, I would have just kicked him out. Okay, but here's the thing, though. You have to remember he's his roommate as well. And there's a lot of comments in here with a lot of people saying, like, oh, just kick him out. Like, he, he's, he doesn't deserve to be in here. Just like every everyone in the comments was saying, just kick him out. There doesn't seem to be, like, any communication. At, from this post, there doesn't seem to be any communication happening with the OP, first of all. Saying like, hey, don't butt in. It just sounds like Balor is constantly trying to just butt in, but he's not being told no about it. So there's some to there there there's something you have to think about because if he tries to restart this game again, the oh the OP, and doesn't include the roommate, that's where things get tricky and a little bit drama filled and a lot of people uh, like other people in the chat was like oh like like oh just just don't talk about it just like because you know you don't want to deal with the drama but if you don't include it into the game when you restart it there's gonna be drama as well uh, you gave me a shrug jake and what are your thoughts uh i have had problematic uh communication issues with a roommate so I would not repeat that mistake and like, nope, you're just, you're just not going to be part of this. If you're going to treat myself and the other players this way. Okay. John, do you have can any insights from that? I was, well, so can we get, when we have confirmation, Jake, did you kick him out of the, of your, as a roommate after you kick him out of your D D game, you know, <laughs> and just get the drama out of there, you know, all in one swoop. Uh, or... I got kicked out. Oh, Oh no! Reversal. I Wait. got I got kicked out of the apartment. Oh, <laughs> for like D and D stuff, or no, not because of D and D stuff. Oh, okay, but oh. eventually. Oh gosh! Dang man. Well, dang. <laughs> yeah, that's so Number one on that uh, added that intimidation, dude. <laughs> Holy uh... crap! That. <laughs> Anyway, that's the last we'll hear from Jake and it is input. <laughs> no, alright, yeah, but anyway, there just seems to be a whole lack of communication just between him and the the roommate, the OP and the roommate. Like obviously the guy's a game designer, so I could see him getting excited and being like, hey, that, that was a stupid way of doing things. But then again, 
we don't know if OP has openly talked to this roommate about, hey, maybe not do that. Hey, maybe, like, wait until I ask you for something. And also, I just, I just feel like there just needs to be communication here. There, there is no communication happening. And I, I'm me on my end, I am personally against just kicking them out of the group. I would rather talk to them first to make sure, you know, if things are okay, giving them a chance. If he hasn't had a chance yet, and then going forward from there. That that's my opinion. <laughs> and crickets. All right, cool. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just leaving space for you, man. I uh, no, you're right. He's uh, like, there is there's a certain like to go into like the discussion about like DMing. It's like there's like a certain level, right? Let's say you're a new DM. And you're very, you're a very experienced player sitting at that table. You don't want to, st want to step on the DM's toes. You want, like, if you need, if you need help, if you want anything, I am here. Never gonna volunteer. That's only if asked. That's only. I'm not gonna be coming out here saying you should paint your miniatures a different color, bro. Right. Bad job. <laughs> like, How dare you? Yeah. Like light like green instead of dark green. Nah. That's right. uh. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that that's just kind of what is it what it is. But let's move on to the next one. This one, I'm I'm excited for this one. This one is titled They All Cast Fireball. Here we go. They all cast fireball. A lesson on why spellcaster enemies should not share the same initiative count. Our party was running up on some evil wizards who had a MacGuffin. We needed to get into the next area. We had initially allied with them, but after doing more than our share of the work, they hadn't done the bare minimum. So things escalated into a fight. The enemies won the initiative, and the DM had all five mages act on the same initiative count. Our party was pretty spread out with the druid and wizard uh, together in the center, leading the conversation, while the cleric, bard, and fighter were all on the flanks. The wizards bandit minions kicked things off by doing a little bit of a damage to, or a little bit of damage to everyone at range. The party wizard takes a few hits but saves his reaction to counterspell because all five evil wizards mages go next. On their turn, they cast fireball on our druid and wizard. All of them cast fireball. Our wizard successfully counterspells the first, but that's his one reaction. Then the second wizard upcast cast fireball. The DM citing that he saw the first one counterspelled. The wizard fails his deck save and is down. Then the third fireball, wizard fails a death save. Fourth fireball on the same spot. Wizard takes a second death save and the druid is down despite tiefling fire resistance. So what does DM have the fifth wizard do? Now that both targets are unconscious, he casts fireball in the same spot. The wizard has taken four fireballs in a single initiative count, 32, 32 D6, and is dead before any players have a chance to act. There is nothing he could have done to prevent it once we rolled initiative. At this point, the wizard played the wizard player says that's pretty shitty of the DM to do that, especially since the cleric and the bard were also grouped together and are an equal threat. The DM said, yeah, these guys aren't messing around. Long story short, the bard got su uh, surrounded by bandit minions at the start of the next round and then got a similar hit by three cone of colds on the wizard's turn, which also killed all the bandits. The third cone of cold rolls 50 plus damage and the bard suffers instant death. The cleric had one 300 gold piece diamond component and after a lot of humming and hawing, chose to revive the bard. In my opinion, that is an awful position for the cleric player because it creates hard feelings for the player whose character was not chosen to live. The evil wizards also did not have any diamond components on them. The wizard player had two years of character growth wiped out in a single round and was extremely pissed. He cursed out the DM for a bit, then got up and left for the day. At the next session, he came back with a disruptive joke character, and I honestly do not blame him. Oh, <laughs> So we have a, I wouldn't even say power hungry dungeon master. We just have a murder hobo dungeon master at our hands at the moment. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, but what are your guys' takes on this? I have my thoughts, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts first. 
John? Jake, can you go, for, Jake, oh, can you go oh, first? Oh. I, have a hot t- I have a hot take. You have a hot take? Oh. Yeah. Um, so I, I have several questions about what it was going into this campaign. Was it, is it supposed to be a harder, more brutal campaign? Were they warned? Were they given signs ahead of time? Like, hey, these enemies are not to be messed with. Like, you need a giant plan. Um, I personally batch all of my enemies, like minions and everything, into like one initiative. So they all go at once. I haven't had them all do something like this, where they all cast the exact same thing. But I, I do want to know what the setup was for this. That's that's where I'm at right now. John, what's your hot take? Um, so this is instinct, like as a DM, when you've been running for a bit and your players are, you know, defeating everything handedly. And a lot of the time it's the wizard thunder waving, fireballing, all the things you put from. So then you start to overcorrect and you throw a bunch of things at the wizard and then suddenly the wizard's dead and suddenly we get into this like escalation i think that's erring on the side of maybe this guy's heart was in the right place he wanted to challenge his players okay but could but overcorrected and was just like oh i need to put them in situations where they will clearly die mm. uh maybe because that's you know some folks do not know how to control that dial as a dm of i want to challenge them so of course i sent eight assassins after them that's challenging right i you know so that's my hot take it might it, or this could just be a guy that just really did not like the wizard player <laughs> had to so, so. One, of, one of the things that stuck out to me that makes it seem like the the, the dungeon master knew what he was doing was how the wizard decided to counterspell the first fireball and this was instantly and he was also having the other mages go at the same time to me all of those mages are all acting in the first six seconds of combat if you look at it this way I- i'm getting real realistic here uh, Counterspell happens instantaneously. It's like that. Okay? It's like snap at a finger. The wizard counterspells the first fireball, but the DM goes, oh, okay, and then heightens the next fireball because they, they saw the other one get canceled. So to me, the, the DM already knew what he was doing. He already cast five fireballs, plus already had... A backup plan in case one of them got counterspelled. So to me, it definitely feels like the dungeon master is was definitely out for something. Maybe they had a rough day. Maybe the players were, you know, being incredibly overpowered and just destroying everything left and right. You get that DM syndrome where it's like, I want to give them something challenging. I want to have some fun. And then ends up doing that. And just straight up kind of killing the players. I do not agree that... Well, th- here's another thing, too. He killed almost the entire party with giving the cleric one chance to revive someone. And the DM didn't give any of the other mages any type of, like, diamond or gold on them to revive. The dungeon master knew what he was freaking doing. That is my take. Yeah, that's probably what it's probably the realistic take. <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably what happened. Just being an area on the side, the right. side of it, because you know why not? Right. So, I mean, it sounded like they all came back and played Dungeons and Dragons the other day, and the guy just brought in a joke character. So, like, I I, I don't know the dynamic. Seriously, it just I'm... maybe he was good for this whole time. It was just this one point. I mean, we've all playing Dungeons and Dragons, whether you're a DM or a player, made a stupid mistake like that. No, probably not like this, but you probably every one of us has upset another player in one point in time. I've done it. And it was during the time where I went, it's what my character would do. I fall under that category. Oh. But I don't think I've ever got out of my way to piss off my entire party by killing all of them. 
Okay, I haven't been no. there. No. I've, what, I've been in the position. Oh, uh, sorry. I I've I have not been in that mindset yet. <laughs> sorry, go ahead, John. Oh, I'll just say I've been in the position where your character dies and you just come in as a disruptor. Like, fine, I'm I'm Gerald the Gerald Wizard <laughs> of Geraldton. Like, that's you know just beautiful. It's just fine. Anyway, I guess we're all under the consensus the dungeon master was in the wrong here. Obviously. I think so. Yeah, if if you want to, like... Th th there's something with being a dungeon master. So, like, here's the thing. As, being a dungeon master, you are supposed to help your party get through your campaign. That is the goal as the dungeon master. You are supposed to guide them and help them through the campaign. Your goal is to not straight up kill them. Like, that is not your goal. Unless you say to them again beforehand, hey, this is going to be an intense campaign, you could die. Then in their mindset, they're like, okay, the dungeon master is out to, like, there's no holding back. The DM is just going to do what he knows what's going to do. He's not going to fudge anything. So, yeah. Any other thoughts between you two? No. No. Nah. Okay. Yeah, he covered it. Yep. Seems like the chat also has agreed that the DM was in the wrong here. Yes, exactly. Don't kill them unless you say beforehand that the world is ruthless. Honestly, that's the way I rule nowadays. Yes, mm -hmm. but there's also the same time. And I think this is just a general thing and a general rule in just all D and D. If you're gonna do something, if you as a player are gonna do something stupid, and your character dies. That's your fault for putting your character in that situation. The Dungeon Master, yes, has the final say, but if you keep escalating it and then they die, yeah, I mean, there, there's no going back to it. Like, I'm going to jump off a 20-foot cliff and try to land. All right. Good luck type of thing. But anyway, there's that. We only did two. I think that was were good discussions. Very fun. Uh, good conversation starters. We had one where pretty much comes into communication and also others we had a problematic player or two problematic players but anyway um now that i am sitting down and i'm not performing first of all thank you to everyone who came in with so many donations today thank you guys so very much for all of these super chats again you guys are a huge reason why this channel is able to stay afloat you got this, a lot of this channel is becoming from crowdfunding. And thank you to Gavin for coming in with all the super chats and the 10 gifted subs as well. Thank you so very much. I'll have to update all, everything later on. But anyway, guys, before we go, um, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Jaken and John also want to hear your guys' thoughts with these, uh, this, this test run that we decided to try to do. So, Jacob did bring up a good point that when I first started the fur, well, you describe it. When we first started uh, doing the uh, the first game, the Epic Campaign Recap, and then when we did the D&D Top 10, tell them what you saw. Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, a, a portion of it could be because we didn't really like, we don't really advertise what a stream is going to be. So a lot of people who were first coming in kind of came in the middle of it and were just kind of like, what's going on? Um, but with the first segment, there was like a, there was starting to be a little bit of a dip in viewership. And then when we went to the tier list, it shot up to almost 300, which was pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. And John, then yep, after good. that, it just kind of fluctuated. Yeah, it's a bit fluctuating this whole time from what I've seen. But John, did you see anything that really stood out to you? I uh, I think the once doing that bit with the prompts with the audience interaction and if we can get a proper way for polls and folks to interact with that, that's that was working out really well. Like oh, okay. that, I think I think I think that feed like that grows. Like I don't know if the chat can agree if they like giving you prompts to do stuff. But, uh, but that was definitely one of my favorite parts. Okay, great. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Um, yeah, but I, I didn't really see a lot of the chat or anything. Again, I had to be the face. I had to perform. But 
chat, I, I, I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Again, it seemed like everyone loved the reenacting campaign one. Uh, everyone loved the TTR or the, the tier list one. Um, the D and D theatrics was good. And then, yeah. What did you guys think of the D and D story? Uh, the, the D and D Reddit stories as well. Did you guys enjoy the D and D Reddit stories? I, I totally forgot to ask that. That was my fault. The prompts are the stuff. It's good. This was a lot of fun. You should definitely do something like this with more people. Yep. Yes. Amazing. Yes. They were eye opening. Yes. I love Reddit. I like the other parts better. That's fair. I like them. Love the Reddit stories. Yes. Can you throw it back, please? We need it. I'm back. I, I can't. I literally like the green screen is right behind me. It's really hard. Uh, theatrics was fun too. Yes. Stories were fun. Lean to some great D and D sessions. Interact with the chat. Okay. That's good. Uh, So I say death and we just need better things for voting. Fair. Saw your videos. Not a fan of the Reddit stories. And that's fair. Reddit stories were awesome. The Reddit stories were my least favorite part, to be honest. But it was good. This was really fun. Really liked it. And again, I'm really sorry. For, or That's totally fine. Uh, favorite session. Good. All of it was great. Got to say my opinions. Duke, I got into D because I saw your videos. Reddit stories were kind of funny, too. It was good, but theatrics was... Oh, okay, so this is interesting. People like the theatrics more. I thought people were going to enjoy the campaign recaps. Here, I'm going to I'm gonna start a voting poll. Which was your favorite? And then I just, I just want to see what everyone's thoughts are on this. Epic campaign recap. D&D top 10. D&D... Theatrix. Okay, that didn't go. D and D. Theatrix. D and D. Oops. Uh, Reddit stories. All right, there we go. If you see the poll, if you are on a computer, please, 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 please vote so we can see what you guys enjoyed. From this. One big session from all the viewers here. That's got yeah, that's true. For the theatrics. The theatrics one is where we had a prompt. So the one with uh me trying to find the bear and that whole thing, and then Jacob was telling me to stop and then he'd roll and we got suggestions from you guys. I like the one where it was a story and got paused and showed. Okay, that one. Wow. D&D Theatrics. So it looked like D&D Theatrics is first, followed by D&D Reddit Stories, and Epic Campaign Recap and D&D Top 10 are tied. Yeah, obviously people get mixed opinions about it. I what I like about the D and D stories is it opens it up to conversations. I see a lot of D and D storytellers on YouTube where it's more just their opinion and they say it and then they give their opinion. I enjoy being able to open up to discussion where, you know, we there's three different people here. We may all have three different opinions on it, and then that's where you guys could pause and you could talk with your significant other or your partners and discuss the same thing. And just kind of see who you, which kind of person you agree with. So I, I do like the D&D &D Reddit stories. Okay, so we got 96 votes in. Let's do four more votes. And then we'll close it. Can we have cool transition? Yeah, we'll we'll definitely add so many more things to this. We totally will. Do not worry. Yeah, it would work better if I only had to play one character. That is correct. Uh, 
All right, gonna end the poll really fast. So at the moment we have D&D uh, D &D Theatrics at 53%, D&D Reddit Stories at 23%, D&D Top 10 at 14%, and Epic Campaign Recaps at 9%. All right, interesting. I thought Epic Campaign Recap was going to do better. And so th this is actually really cool to see. I. I honestly thought Epic Camping Recap was going to be our top one, and D and D Theatrics was going to be the worst performing one. So that's all. That's that's cool to see how that worked. It could be a whose line is it anyway type of thing. It, it totally could. Like again, why we're doing this is mainly because. Again, um, the channel is in this weird limbo of, you know, everything happened at with D&D at the beginning of the year. And so that kind of hurt the channel. And at the same time, everyone's pushing for short form content, which is pushing a lot of sketch comedy over to the short form content. And if I'm being straight up honest right now, our, our comedy videos on our YouTube channel aren't, haven't been performing very well because of all of it. And at the same time, I'm posting these same videos over on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram, and they outperform our YouTube videos now. And so we're trying to figure out what to post and what to do for our new traditional videos because just it sucks. Like two of the main things that we're focused on is being crushed. <laughs> so that, that's what we're trying to figure out at the moment. So again, very much of a crapshoot. I really appreciate you guys sticking around, even though if it was cringy, if it was hard to watch, again, I half expected, but I was trying to go all in with it. So, we'll see what happens. Algorithm just doing algorithm stuff. It's true. It's true. But at the same time, YouTube is also pushing eight minutes or more. For videos so we just we just have to adapt it's so cringe i love it yes i know <laughs> all right but thank you all uh please after the video please leave your thoughts in the comments we're gonna read we're gonna read through them we're going to uh definitely uh keep an eye on what you guys think i feel like Reddit stories and D&D theatrics are definitely two we're going to keep. D&D uh, top 10 and um, epic campaign recap are definitely going to be two that we kind of put on the back shelf for now. And I feel like doing D&D theatrics and D&D Reddit stories, we're going to build off of those a little bit better. But thank you all so very much. We're going to end that stream right there. Uh, me and the team are going to discuss off uh, camera, but we love you guys. We appreciate you. Thank you again for everyone watching. Thank you for all of the super chats and all the gifted subs. Thank you for all the likes. Thank you for voting. We love you guys. We appreciate you. John and Jacob, thank you guys for jumping on and helping out with this. And just again, thank you to the fans. Thank you for being patient with us. And thank you for just helping us out with everything we've been doing. So take care. Have a great weekend. Enjoy tomorrow's video. It's about combat skills and magic found in D&D. So hopefully that helps a lot of you uh, new fans out with uh, within the channel and also with D&D. But love you guys. Take care. We'll see you later.